Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another InfoGamer lesson on how to create different game mechanics inside Unity. For this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a ghost platform, which is a platform that's triggered by the player and will disappear after a period of time. This game mechanic can be used to increase the difficulty of a level because it gives the player a sense of urgency. It can also be used to guide the players in a certain direction and prevent them from going backwards. And the most important thing that you need to remember as we develop this game mechanic is the visual cue that we give to the player so they know how much time they have before the platform will disappear. Here's two examples from Mario Odyssey. We first have the rusty platforms, which begins to break as Mario steps on them and eventually falls out from underneath. These platforms give Mario about three to five seconds before he has to jump to the next platform. And during those three to five seconds, the platforms are constantly changing, getting closer and closer to breaking apart. The second example is this big section of road, which is actually different than what we'll be creating because these platforms are set to a timer. But you can see that when the timer begins to run out, the platforms start to blink, which is another example of a visual cue that the platform's about to disappear. And so now let me show you how to create your own ghost platform within Unity. Now first I'll demonstrate this game mechanic. Here you can see I have my ball and I have my ghost platforms, and as the ball touches a ghost platform, you can see that it begins to fade. And once it reaches the end of its animation, it disappears and the ball can fall through that hole. Now the reason why I wanted to create a ghost platform is because I'm using it within our Marble Game Group project and I've included it in the Level Builder Unity package for this project. Now if you'd like to learn more about this project and get involved, you can go to the project page which I've linked in the description below. To create a ghost platform, we're going to start with a 3D cube, although you might want to have a different shape for your platform. So you can right click in the hierarchy, go down to 3D object and select cube. I've then scaled this object up in the x and z direction, and I've set it to 3 for now. This object should already have a mesh filter, mesh render, and a box collider attached. But if you want your platform to fade away, then we need to change the material of this object. And so we'll create a new material by right-clicking in the project window, going up to Create, and then selecting Material. This material I've named Ghost Platform. And it's just a standard material, but I've changed the render mode to fade, which allows us to change the transparency of this material by altering the alpha channel of the albedo color. So we'll select our ghost platform and then we'll drag this material into the mesh render component. At this point, we can now animate our ghost platform. And I've created two animations. The first one I've called ghost platform fade and the second I've called reset ghost. For the ghost platform fade, I've added our box collider.enable property. And then I've actually added two properties for the color, but only one of them's being used because the other is for a different material. But the one that you'll want to use if you're using the standard material is mesh underscore color. We can then create a series of keyframes where the alpha channel of our material is changing from 2.5 back to 1, and this change happens faster and faster as it gets to the end of our animation. Then on the last keyframe, we want to set the alpha channel to 0, and we want to disable our box collider. And we want to make sure that this animation is only 1 second long. Now you might have different ideas for how to animate your ghost platform. You could have the platform change color and then shrink over time. You could also have the color slowly fade to zero and then have some sort of steam particle effect playing. This is just what I decided to go with for my example. For the reset ghost animation, we have the same properties, but we only have one keyframe where our box collider is re-enabled and our color is back up to one. Now once you have these animations created, we want to select them within the project window and we want to make sure that loop time is disabled we can then jump over to the animator component. And in here, we first want to create a new empty state so we can right click anywhere and then go to create state and select empty. I've then renamed this state to waiting and I've set it as our layer default. So you can right click on it and then select set as layer default state. We then need to make the transitions and so we can right click on waiting and select make transition. We'll then select our ghost platform fade. We then have a transition going from ghost platform fade to reset ghost and from reset ghost back to waiting. At this point, we'll create two new parameters. The first one is of type bool and it's called trigger. The second is of type float and it's called disappear time. We then want to select the transition from waiting to ghost platform fade. And here I've disabled the has exit time and I've added a condition for trigger to equal true. Then from our ghost platform fade to our reset ghost, we want to disable has exit time, but our condition will be trigger equals false. And from reset ghost to waiting, we want to leave has exit time enabled. We'll set the exit time to one, fixed duration is checked, and the transition duration and offset are set to zero. We can then select our ghost platform fade animation 
animation. And we want to enable parameter for multiplier, and we'll have it set to our disappear time parameter. This will make it so that we can extend the amount of time that it takes our ghost platform to disappear once triggered. And all we have to do for that is set the disappear time parameter within our code. Now once we have our animations created and our animator set up, we should notice that there's a new animator component attached to our ghost platform. And at this point, we can add a new script to our ghost platform. And this script I've called ghost platform, and we'll go ahead and open it up. Inside this script, we need five variables. The first is a serialized field of type string called player tag, and I'm setting it equal to player for default. We then need a serialized field of type float called disappear time, and I'm setting it equal to three. I then have an animator, which I've called my anim. And next we need another serialized field of type bool called can reset. And finally, we need a serialized field of type float called reset time. Once we have these variables created, we can then initialize our animator variable within the start function. And so I have my anim equals get component and we're looking for an animator after which we can set the disappear time parameter and so I have my anim dot set float we then have disappear time and we're setting it equal to one divided by disappear time and the reason why I'm doing this is because our disappear time animation is only one second long and the speed of the animation is one and so in order to have a three second animation rather than multiplying the speed by three which would make it go faster we want to divide the speed by the amount of time we want it to take and this will allow us to set the disappear time in the inspector to the amount of time that we want it to take. After this, we need to create the onCollisionEnter function. And inside this function, we have an if statement where we're checking to see if collision.transform.tag equals our player tag variable. If it does, then we want to set our trigger parameter. And so I have my anim.setbool, and I have trigger and then we're setting it equal to true. This will trigger the transition between our waiting state and our ghost platform fade animation. Next up, we'll handle the reset of our ghost platform. For this, we'll need a public void function, which I've called trigger reset. And inside this function, we have an if statement where we're checking to see if can reset equals true. And if it does, then we want to start a coroutine. So I have start coroutine, and our coroutine is going to be called reset. We can then create this coroutine down here. So we essentially have another function with the return type I enumerator, and it's called reset. And inside this function, we want to have yield return new, and then wait four seconds, and we're passing in our reset time, after which we can set our trigger parameter back to false. So I have my anim.setbool, and we're passing in trigger and false. This will make it so that after a certain amount of time, our animator will transition from the end of our ghost platform fade animation to the reset animation. And then the reset animation will transition back to the waiting state, where our platform will be waiting until it's triggered again by another player. So once we have all this, we can save the script, and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we want to select our ghost platform and attach our ghost platform script to this object. We then want to go to our ghost platform fade animation, and we want to right click in this space above the last keyframe. We'll then select add animation event, and in the function drop down menu, we want to select trigger reset. This will make it so that when our ghost platform fade animation is finished, it'll call the trigger reset function, which will start the coroutine, which waits for a period of time, and then resets our platform. And now within the inspector, we can set the player tag variable to match whatever tag we want for the objects that will trigger the ghost platform. And so for my ball object, I've set the tag of this object to be player. We can then set the disappear time to be however many seconds we want it to take for the platform to disappear. If we want our platforms to be able to reset, we can enable the can reset variable and then set the reset time to be some value. And once we've done this, we can make a prefab out of our ghost platform. And we can do this by dragging it from the hierarchy to our project window. We can then add this prefab as many times as we want to any scene that we want. And now I'll demo this game mechanic one more time, but I'm going to enable can reset and I'll set the reset time to something like three seconds. All right, so here I have my ball. It's rolling around on the ghost platforms and we'll see if within three seconds, there we go, our platforms are coming back. Now that's everything I'm going to show you in this video on how to create a ghost platform. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos.